The future always seems to be right in reach, but somehow it's still nearly impossible to predict. So it's always impressive when predictions actually turn out to be accurate. Some of the most impressive predictions often come from science fiction writings. Sometimes it may be because the genre inspired the invention, but often sci-fi writers write about the future state of humanity, not just technology. Whether or not H.G. Wells accurately predicted the fate of our split species in the year 800-2701, our generation and many after will never know. But some of the writings were a little closer to our time, and we have seen the things that writers got wrong, and what they got right. This episode of Sci Fives, we list off science fiction writers that accurately predicted the future. Number five, video conferencing, Jules Verne, 1889. Jules Verne is one of the most renowned science fiction writers of all time. He has written classics such as Journey to the Center of the Universe and Around the World in 80 Days, but we're going to be focusing on his short story in the year 2889. In this story, Verne describes the phonotelephone, which was essentially video conferencing, or more commonly known today as FaceTiming. Verne described the phonotelephone as a device that allowed the transmission of images by means of sensitive mirrors and connected by wires. This is said to be one of the earliest references of video conferencing. Jules wrote, Here is another great triumph of modern science. The transmission of speech is an old story. The transmission of images by means of sensitive mirrors connected by wires is a thing but of yesterday. A valuable invention indeed. In the year 2889 also predicts newscasts, recorded news, and skywriting. While the story was originally thought to be the works of Jules, many believe it was in fact the work of his son, Michael Verne. While it can't be confirmed, the story is credited to Jules, and even those who believe it was Michael still believe it was based on Jules' ideas. Number 4. The Atomic Bomb, H.G. Wells, 1914. This one is not so upbeat. The atomic bomb originally got its inspiration from H.G. Wells' The World Set Free. Wells predicted that a new type of bomb fueled by nuclear reactions would be invented, and even guessed the detonation to be in 1956. While this is not exactly the year we saw it, it is strikingly close. Physicist Leo Szilard apparently read Wells' book and soon after patented the idea. Szilard was later directly involved in the Manhattan Project. Astonishingly, Wells not only predicted the scientific aspect of the bomb, but also the moral and ethical horror that people would feel upon its use, as well as the long-lasting effects of radioactive ruin the bomb would leave behind. While this is not one of the more positive stories of science fiction inspiring real life, the error seems not to be that of Wells, considering that he wrote a warning, not a suggestion. A warning we should have taken into consideration. Number 3. Edward Bellamy's Looking Backward predicted credit cards. 63 years before credit cards were invented, Edward Bellamy had a very similar idea. In his 1888 utopian science fiction novel, the main character Julian West falls asleep for 113 years and wakes up in the year 2000. This is when he finds out everyone is using credit cards to buy goods. Bellamy describes the card to be a bit more similar to a debit card, which is still a long way off from his time. He also touched on an online store, where customers pick items that they want and they're delivered right to their doorstep. Slightly similar to Amazon. As well, some even believe he may have foreshadowed radio or on-demand music. Bellamy also predicted the societal state of 2000. However, many aspects of these predictions were incredibly off. Basically, he predicted a Marxist state. There were no poor, people worked less hours, etc. Unfortunately, to the modern reader, these predictions seem incredibly naive. But you know what they say about communism. It looks good on paper, just not in practice. Number two, Stand on Zanzibar by John Brunner, 1969. This one is so accurate, it slightly makes you wonder if Brunner could actually see to the future. To begin, Stand on the Zanzibar is set in the year 2010. In this year, the U.S. president was named, get this, President Obama. While that's a fun start, the predictions made in Brunner's novel are actually sad to be our reality. The story is written in real time of the characters' lives, where we see a chaotic dystopian future where terrorist threats and attacks are an everyday occurrence. Violence in schools is almost considered old news, and in this future, Detroit is pretty much a ghost town. Fortunately, the negatives weren't the only predictions to become a reality. The story also predicts hookup culture and gay lifestyles are widely accepted. People also have satellite TV and electric cars. 
John Bruner predicted a lot to extreme accuracy. However, he may have had a slight advantage seeing as many of the other entries in this list were predicting nearly a century into the future, but nonetheless, Bruner proved himself to be an excellent writer, with shockingly impressive foresight. And that brings us to number one, Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift in 1726. Over a century before the discovery of Mars's two moons, Jonathan Swift wrote about them in Gulliver's Travels. In the story, the main character, Lemuel Gulliver, leaves on a voyage after his business fails. He finds himself at his first location after he awakes following a shipwreck, but it was his second location where he makes an interesting prediction. After being attacked by pirates, Gulliver finds himself on an island in Laputa. This island is inhabited by theoreticians and academics. Gulliver learned that the astronomers on this island discovered the two moons of Mars in their research. Swift described them as two lesser stars or satellites, which revolve about Mars. Swift described the two moons of Mars orbiting at distances of 3 and 5 Martian diameters with periods of 10 and 21.5 hours. The actual orbital distance of Phobos and Deimos are 1.4 and 3.5 Martian diameters, and their respective orbital periods are 7.6 and 30.3 hours. While not entirely accurate, it's still scary close. Fast forward 151 years. On August 12, 1877, Asif Hall Sr. discovers, and you guessed it, the two moons of Mars. Thanks for listening to this episode of sci fives If you liked it, check out the last episode of Terrifying Space Stories by Astronauts. Stay tuned for more lists on all things science and science fiction.